Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Frank's Comic Castle. I am Daniel, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different for this channel, at least. I'm going to do a review of this movie. I've never done a review before, but I think I figured I should do something different, and uh, I watched this movie yesterday, and I want to talk about it. First of all, I have two movies. I have two new pickups, or I talked about them last video that I've and it's been waiting for these movies to arrive, and they finally arrived just a couple of days ago. And let's go uh, to review to the pickups and just show you what I got. So first up is Flatliners, the original movie. Here, there's nothing there, just the Blu-ray itself, just the back. So this is obviously the original with uh, Kevin Bacon, Julia Roberts, Peter Sutherland, uh, William Baldwin, and Oliver Platt. Um, there was a remake, you know, that came out um, not too many years ago with uh, Ellen Page and um, Elisha Dusko. And Keith R. Sutherland has a small part in it, which was nice to do like a, a homage or connection to the... <clears throat> original version but this one is much better the original the the remake was really a shit movie not good at all this is this however is really good um haven't watched it in a lot of, in a lot of years but I'm really happy and really stoked to getting this this is you can also get this in a arrow films uh, edition which has, which has which has a lot of more extras but I didn't get the arrow edition of it but I'm really looking forward to Flatliners. The other movie I picked up was, to me, one of the absolute best movies of 2022, and I'm talking about The Northman. You can see the back of the movie there. Not a lot of extras on this one either. I think it has like an audio commentary and something. I haven't, uh, let's see, no, it doesn't say, honestly, which is too bad. This is a just an outstanding movie. Doesn't have anything there. Here's this. Um, an absolutely amazing movie. The Northman is it's a movie that, that is stunningly beautiful. The the visuals, the, the the scenery, just the artwork sort of say in it, the the everything, the costumes, the the words the words they speak. It's amazing, it's amazing acting. Um, it's Alexander Skarsgard Skarsgard's best performance yet on, on the cinema. I understand this is not a movie for everybody. Robert Eggers' style of movies are not for everybody. This and The Witch and uh, The Lighthouse, they're very special. They're very different, very special, sort of say. And, and he always draws from folk tales and folk horror. Obviously, The Witch was, you know, the, the uh, a British folk tale, but also a bit of American folk tale as well with The Witch. And he has a storytelling and a visual storytelling that is quite, quite, uh, quite unique and quite special. We have a movie coming out later. I think it's coming out this year. Uh, Nosferatu. So he'll be doing this folk version of Nosferatu. But this is highly recommended for me by me. Uh, one of the best movies of 2022. One of the absolute best movies. There were. There were a couple. There were a couple of movies that were memorable for me in 2022. The Northman was one of them. X. X was another one. X was an excellent horror movie. Excellent horror movie. Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front perhaps was the best like written movie. I know it's a remake of the original, but uh, amazing, amazing movie. Watch All Quiet on the Western Front. You can buy watch it on on. Uh, Netflix. That was that was such a good movie, and also the the Batman, I think was great. Those were the best movies. But I have this all quiet on. Uh, it's not all quiet on the streets. This is The Northman. I highly recommend. If you love The Witch, if you like The Witch, you're definitely gonna enjoy this. It's not for everybody, but it's up my alley. Yeah. I truly love it. <clears throat> I have three movies that I ordered today, actually. So. One is not in stock, so it will be taken, but it says between the 
one to two weeks. So that's when I'll be doing my next video at some point because I'm starting a new job in about two weeks as well. So, but as you know, I don't do videos every day. So nothing's going to change too much, hopefully. Well, let's get into the main focus of this video, and that's the review of this a fugitive from the past, or Straits of Hunger, as it also has been called. So this is by Tomo Ushida. Tomo Ushida. Here you see the actual disc itself. There you go. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the packaging first, because you get this wonderful booklet. It's, comes, it's 50 pages, so it's like a small book. I've only read part of it so far, but it's very interesting. Very interesting. Um, yeah, absolutely. This is you get so much from this, with uh, how about not only about the movie, but about the director and the shape of Japanese cinema at the time, because this movie came out in 1965. So this is about. In this, and also there's a very great special feature. Let's see if I can get the name here. It's a. Uh, I'm sorry for. Uh, it's an introduction by writer and curator Jasper Sharp. He does a tremendous introduction. I don't know how you can see how long it is. He talks for a good 20, 30 minutes about the movie, about the director, about the actors, and about cinema. In Japan at the time, in the 19, so this came out in 1965, so it's post World War II, and this movie takes place. It begins in 1947, so right after the Second World War, and it, it shows because you can really see um, the effects on you know the land in general on Japan and on the people, how they're really struggling and they're poor and. It's a tough, tough, tough place to be alive, and it's a tough time to be alive in in, in Japan as well. I'm just going to show you more. As it is common with uh, Arrow, they do these reversible covers. So you get this one, the, the the one that Arrow made themselves, and there you have, and we have the original, which is almost as good. Not a ton of extras. Usually when you buy a, a uh, Arrow release, there's, you know, tons of extras. As you can see here, it's not a whole lot. It has to do with audio. It doesn't really have, you know, uh, a lot of documentaries, except for these, this uh, introduction. It doesn't really have anything other than that, which is a bit sad. You would want it want more. <clears throat> but I'm still very happy to get, can you get this? Now, you only get this in the first pressing of the movie. When the first pressing, and I don't know how many um, they released or they did the first pressing, but when those run out, you won't get this booklet. So I pre-ordered this movie before it came out. I pre-ordered it um, day after on the December 25th, I think. So obviously, I got it like last week. So it took, took a while, it took almost almost a month, but I was perfectly fine. I, I pre pre order, you know, it takes a while. But I got this. That's uh, that's really great. And here we can see some production details on on the transfer of the, the making and curation of this. And here's Tomo Uchida, of the people that that made this possible. And also you have here's cast and crew of the people that made this. You know, I'm sorry that I can't pronounce all these names. So you can read them instead of me trying to pronounce it and offend people that way. So as I said, this place takes place 1947, so right after the Second World War, Japan is in disarray and it's not a good place. <coughs> so it's really two people that play the main... It's. Uh, I'm going to read this. Sorry for mispronouncing anything, but it's Rentario Mikuni and Sa Sashiko Hitari, Hido Hidari, Sashiko Hidari. Those two play the main characters in this movie. 
as Renaro, Rentaro, Saro, Sar, Saro, sorry, is a prisoner. But no, no, he's a fugitive. He commits. He is with two other partners, and they commit a crime, and they flee, and he ends up with a prostitute. Ten years kind of pass on, proceed. So we move on to 1957, and the crimes of Rentaro are, are discovered again as he commits another crime. So he kills his two partners, partners in crime, and towards the end of the movie, we sort of find out the reason why. Spoiler warning. <laughs> and we also, you know, it's a sort of a redemption story as well, and, and uh, it also kind of tells a story about how Japan sort of gets its redemption from the Second World War, how in 1947 the, the country is in disarray, in complete disarray, and in 1957 it's actually grown and become much, much better, uh, and it's in, in, in a better state. And it's a fantastic tale, it's a fantastic story. It's a three hour long movie, so it takes its time telling this story, but it does it in a magical way, an absolutely fantastic way. Uh, one thing I do have to say is uh, Sashiko Hidari, who plays Yaya, Yai Sugito, Jai Sugito, uh, the prostitute, plays in the beginning very erratic. She seems like she's on drugs. Really, I really didn't understand her character at all. It was, she was just, she was really, really weird. But she almost has the main, main, almost the main lead of this movie. She's the most important character of the movie. But it's, it's, it's a detective, detective noir crime story that's told over these three hours, over ten years. And it's masterfully done. And uh, you know, this was voted the third best movie in Japanese cinema history. The third best, which is incredibly impressive. So it tells you how important, how big this movie actually became. Now, as I understand it, this is pretty much the first time that this movie has been released in Europe or in the United States, in the western part of the world, sort of say, outside of, of Asia. I don't know why, but it just hasn't been released, except for, it was like 10, 15 years ago, it, it surfaced it surfaced on film festivals, but other than that, it hasn't gotten a, a DVD or Blu-ray or videotape release until now. Therefore, the movie has been unknown, and the director, Tomo Ushida, has been very unknown himself. And you're looking back at other works and other movies that he's done, his probably most famous movie, or the m movie at least you may know is Bloody Spirit, Mount Fuji. Maybe, you know, ring a bell, maybe an, an, a title you, you've heard of before, but this is probably his best work, uh, highly decorated as well as won numerous awards in, 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 in Asia. And it's one of the most important. I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was beautifully sh shot. It's <clears throat> an interesting part. Sorry for uh, the sun. It's sun out today. It's glaring. Uh, the start of the movie. The first, like, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes is done like an old-time film reel. Because you have this voice talking in the background and it's all filmed like it's a film reel. You you know all those old film reels you see from the 20s and 30s and 40s. And that's pretty impressive. It, it looks really great. It's almost done like a documentary style. I'm going to try to make the sun in the way. Better? Sorry, it's inconvenient. Uh, so it's done like a film reel, which is pretty damn cool. And, and it's it's done it in such it's filmed in such a way that it actually looks like an actual real film and like it's a real film you know news footage a news reel 
that is pretty damn impressive. Very cool. And you also have some grain, you have added some grain to the footage to make it look even older. To, you know, to make it look like it actually is from 1940s. You can also have some other effects to make them do super, like kind of supernatural folk tale style to the movie, like you know, the, like the negative you see on, on photos. So some very nice effects, considering it's 1965. That's very, very impressive. So I have to say this is a this is a a real treat. And if you have three hours, uh, I really recommend it. It's not wasted time anywhere. It's, Go pick up this movie, you can get it from Aerofilm, and it's a cheap, good price, and definitely value, and I highly, highly recommend The Fugitive from the Past. It's a, a tremendous movie. So, there's my review. Um, I'll be back. I don't know exactly when, but um, I got some ideas. Please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more content, and until next video, See you again soon. Bye. Bye.